Today, I'm going to be learning to code in R in three hours. Hello everyone, how are you all? Let me know in the comments. Today, as I've said, it's going to be a coding day. So R is an open source programming language, which I currently have no knowledge of, zilch. And the reason that I am sitting down to learn the basics of R today is in three months time, I've got an exam where I'm going to be expected to use R to perform statistical calculations. The paper I'm preparing for is CS1B and honestly, I should have started preparing for it by now. I've just been putting it off and as I've been going through my course notes, any mention of R, I've just skipped over like, oh yeah, I'll come back to that later. And now it's got to the point where I'm like, uh-oh, the exam is in April and I have never used R before. I am going to be expected to be using R under time pressure to solve statistics problems. So I need to get on it. And that brings us to today. It is why I am sitting down here at my weekend on a Saturday on my day off learning to code. I'm going to try to keep you guys updated with my progress as I go along. Has my download started? That was the first hurdle, working out how to download it. Luckily, I have bought study materials for my actuarial exams from the actuarial education company who have a very handy set of resources for learning to code in R to help us prep for the CS1B exam. So the notes that ACTED have pulled together are going to be my starting point. Just for the next three hours, all I want to do is have a play around in R and familiarising myself with the syntax. Okay, so I have successfully managed to install R Studio. R Studio, from what it sounds like, is just an interface to run R commands through and apparently it is a lot more user friendly. So we like the sound of that. We want something user friendly. So that's what we're going with. I have got a document which runs me through the layout of our studio and what is where. So I am gonna read through that as a starting point. Okay, so far so good. I have whizzed through the first few introduction documents. In a minute, I'm gonna walk you through the stuff I have learned so far, but I'm suddenly really hungry. So I'm gonna go grab some lunch first and then show you guys and demonstrate my new knowledge. Okay, I am back. I am refreshed. I have eaten. I am happy to continue. I am going to screen record my laptop screen, which is sitting in front of me. So I'm currently in our studio. This is the console window where you write your commands in. Add two numbers together, one plus one. It's just like typing it into a calculator. Multiply, divide, the one, I believe, is just the index of the first output value in your output line. You've also got functions in here. So if I wanted to do a log function, you start typing it in and look, there's a handy little prompt that tells you what all the functions do. Over here is the environment window. So if I have any variables stored, for example, if I say a equals six and press enter, that gets stored up here, the values of my variables. Demo, graphics, because demo is a function, clearly. Then if I go into my plots window, look, I've got example plots. So when I'm actually making plots in my exam, they will appear here. What else have I learned? When I'm actually using R, I'm gonna write my code in the script because it doesn't get saved in the console. And then to run that, I go control A, enter. Yeah. If you want to type comments in code, you can just use the hash key. Hello, this is a test. The hash just comments everything to the right of it out. So it's not read as a command. 
it's just used to make your code more readable and people know what's going on. I think the most important thing I've read this morning about R is that it's case sensitive, which is something that would definitely trip me up. If I'm in the console window here and I start typing log with a capital L, log 10, it says error. It says they couldn't find the function log with a capital L at the start because it doesn't recognize it. You have to type log with a lowerbase L 10. Most of the time, I don't think, oh, when you press up, it does the same as what it had before. Interesting. So yeah, that's really kind of where I've got up to so far. I've just been having a play around with typing stuff in the console window, writing a script, trying to execute a script. I just need to go through a few more of the standard functions so I know how to store things as vectors, matrices, etc. I think to store something as a vector, I put assigned as C, or do I use square brackets, do we think? 12, 3, 4, 60. Curly brackets, curly brackets. Oh, it worked. Okay, let's continue this crash course in R. I've got about 15 minutes remaining until my three hours is up and I'm going to take the rest of the day off. Progress update, it's going okay. I got bored reading through all the functions so I've just ended up skipping to looking at questions and my strategy I think is look over their examples to one or two exercises and then attempt the rest of the exercises using the same functions. So the one I'm looking at now is literally just part one of the question and it probably would get me all of two marks but still I am calculating a binomial probability. Firstly they asked me to do it just using the factorial function, then they asked me to do it using the choose function and the d binome function and I think it might have worked because p1, p2, p3 if we look over in our environment window are all the same. This is the other exercise I was trying and just, I'm sorry about my variable names, they are not pretty at all. I'm generating a sample from a uniform distribution from 0 to 36, or well, that's what it's supposed to be doing at least. And I plotted a histogram as well with this one. Look at my beautiful histogram. Now, I'm not totally happy with this because my vertical axis just cuts off a bit early, but also I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is a couple more questions and then call it a night and say that I know how to use R. <laughs> do you know what? I think it's been useful just to dip my toe in, get a feel for it. I just felt completely out of control before today, as in I had no clue how difficult it was going to be, how long it would take me to pick up, what the style of questions would be. I just had absolutely no clue. It was a completely unknown thing and that stressed me out a bit but I feel so much better now because it's not impossible and I think now I've got started this is actually going to encourage me to continue practicing it over the next few weeks. I was just putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and I'm so pleased that I forced myself to actually learn some R today. First one just uses factorial, second one uses the choose function which essentially is factorial, it's just built into that function, and the third one uses the dbinome function. And that's been your last three hours. If I want to put an output I can just put print and the variable, look to up here are my variables. Oh my god your plant just died. Is it been... <laughs> it's just like
wait! Oh my god, you're killing my plants! <laughs> what the hell? This was fine this morning. Does it not deal well with light? I looked up online, right? Saw some research that plants are supposed to reduce stress, increase productivity. I thought those are both really good things. So let's get some plants on my desk. Oh no, they're being taken away. They're also my house plants. <laughs> what about my what room. about my productivity levels? They're gonna drop. My stress levels could go up just because you're taking these the plants stress away. Levels of this plant. Okay, as I said, let's get back to my last couple of questions and call it a day. Okay, that is it. We are done. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm so tired. Give the video a like, subscribe to my channel and follow my Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.